our hearts, Lord, some weeks back. And as you see, we mind to do your word, to do your word, and also, Lord, to do what you ask us to do. It may take long to finish preaching about the churches, but we're still doing it because you ask us to. And we know that this morning you're going to talk to us again. Who am I, Lord, to stand before your people? I just want to say thank you for trusting me. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you, thank you for bringing me here. That's why I'm asking you, Lord, to take total control right now. May the words that I'm going to use this morning come from you and you alone. Allow me to disappear right now, Lord, so that you take total, the total place that is yours and feed us with your word this morning so that we may live here, grown up, changed, transformed, new. Lord, may those who are listening through the internet be blessed as well because your word has no limits. Your hand is not short enough. You can transform us all. Do according to your own will. Thank you, Lord. We're giving you praise and honor, Jesus, and asking you, Lord, to read us as it pleases you. Today, tomorrow, and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Wow, hallelujah. We, we started a few weeks back with this word that the Lord has given into my heart, which was to preach about the churches. But I believe that what the Lord is trying to do is actually to bring us to know that preaching is not always about preaching with revelations. There are also preachings where the Lord wants to teach us. When he, sometimes when Jesus would sit with his disciples, he wasn't only preaching to them, he was also teaching them. This morning again, the Lord wants to teach us something. And that something is not only for the church, it's also for each and every one individually. So it's important for us every time to go back and reflect on what the Lord was trying to say as he left what I'm calling his will. You know when someone is about to die, he leaves a will. It means this is something that is very important to them. Because if Jesus took the time to write to the churches, it means that he had something that was deep in him that he wanted the churches to apply, to use, and to always reflect on. And it's not only about the church that I just said, it's also about us. The last time that we had Brother Kwebu uh, to preach, he, pre he preached on a church that was full of splendor, a very beautiful church. Outside, it was good. He had a very good reputation. But it was spiritually dead. Many Christians are like that. When you see them, when they start praying, you know, wow, this person has a prayerful life. But inside, they are dead. So it means that everything that the Lord is telling us applies to the church as the body of Christ. It also applies to the members of the church that we are also. Amen? Amen. So this morning again, we're not going to be talking about the churches that we have already talked about. We're going to move on with the church that is alive. It's interesting, it is very interesting to see that this church we're going to talk about this morning is the one of the two that Jesus didn't see any reproach. It means that there are churches that are working well. The Lord has nothing to reproach them. The Lord saw that that church was alive and the church was also faithful, which is very good. So some people, some Christians, are alive, spiritually alive, they are faithful, and the Lord has nothing to reproach them, yet he has things to tell them. Those things can be promises, he reminds his promises to them, 
He also gives them advice. And this is what the Lord is doing with the church of Philadelphia that we're going to talk about this morning. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Before we start, can someone uh, read the word of God? Revelation 3, verse 7 till verse 13, please. Can someone stand up and read it in the name of the Lord? Is 
not praising that church or that the Lord is not approving of that church. Amen? Amen? This is what I learned from this text of Philadelphia. And he has given me more strength to know that the Lord approves not the numbers, but what is being done. Amen. This church of, is, is, of Philadelphia is unique because, as I said earlier, it is one of the two churches that the Lord, when, you know, the other churches that we saw last time, when he said, I know your deeds, after he said, I know your deeds, he started reproaching them things. But this one, he didn't reproach them. He said, I know your deeds, but he started giving them advice. But before that, oh my friend, and this is what you should know. I know your deeds, but then he starts recalling first that who he is. The first thing the Lord says is he tells the church who he is and what he does. My friend, you're in a church that is little, that is small in numbers. But do you know who Jesus is? If you really know who he is, you wouldn't wonder sometimes. That's why he's recording us this morning. Who he is, verse 3. Can someone read verse 3 for us, please? And what he does, of course. Revelation. Sorry, 3, verse 7. Sorry. Revelation 3, verse 7. Can you read verse 7, please? To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. Who what he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Amen. Amen. You see? Jesus reminds the church one thing. He is the Holy One. He is the Holy One. This is what we need to understand today. He is the one who is morally perfect. As long as you are trying to walk according to him. That's where you are going to as well. Hallelujah. Amen. He's just telling you, he doesn't want you to be perfect. But he's just telling you that you are following the one who is perfect. Amen. He doesn't want you to be perfect. You are following the one who is without blemish. He's just recalling you that you are my church, Philadelphia, you are my church. I have no complaints about you, but remember, because I have chosen you to be my church, you are following me. I am the one who is holy. Hallelujah! That's all you need to keep in mind. Whether you see or not, remember that you are following the one who is holy, the holy one, the one who is true. Because there's no truth before, after Jesus or before him. No truth can replace him. He is the one. He is the holy one. And he doesn't stop there. He says what that holy one does, my friend. And this is where we should understand the, the, the essence of the message of Philadelphia today. He's the one who holds the key. The key that shuts or opens. You cannot be a, a church where things remain blocked. If you are in a church where things are blocked, my friends wonder, is it the only one who is really leading you? Amen? Amen. And it, it applies to our lives. It applies, the same applies to our lives. Because the Holy One, Jesus, holds the key of David. This is a reference that is recorded in Isaiah 22, which we can read. Uh, Isaiah 22, when God promised to give the keys of the house of David to Eliakim. Eli uh, Eli can someone read it very quickly? Isaiah 22, verse 17. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut. Amen. And what he shuts, no one can open. Amen? You see, my friends, we are talking that about the Lord, our Lord. You know, there are songs sometimes we, we, we sing about it. When Jesus says, no, nobody can say yes. But the thing is that, how, how do we really, really believe in what we are singing? This is where I want the church to reflect today. Sometimes we, we, we sing things, you know, sometimes I want to say, you know, don't even sing. Don't even sing. Because the Bible, you know, Jesus says something. Believe. I'm going to preach on that word one day. What is believing? 
Believe. This is where we all fail most of the time. Because our belief is so much mingled with doubts that we don't even know if we believe or we don't really believe anymore. And or we, we, we think we believe while actually we don't believe. I'm not talking about faith. I'm talking about believing. Because faith is a gift of God. But now we need to believe. Your faith can grow. You have to work for your faith to grow. Yes, but God will give you the faith. But now, the belief is personal. There are people who don't believe in Jesus out there. It's a choice. You see, that's where it is. I will believe. Your belief can take you long. Far. Of course, faith is bigger. But believe. If you don't believe in Christ, you can't come in Christ. Amen? Amen. That's why people out there, there are people who don't believe that God exists. You see what I'm trying to say? It has nothing to do with faith. Faith is another thing. It's just that they don't even believe that it exists. It's just like, I have the mic here. You say, I don't believe this is the mic. If you say that, what can I do for you? I would say it's the mic. You say it's not the mic. My friend, if you don't believe this is the mic, I can sit down with the mic. Until we can discuss until tomorrow. Until you yourself make the decision to believe that it is a mic. Are you getting the difference? That's the thing the Lord is trying to tell us that today. He's the only one who has the keys that opens and shuts. There are doors that are in our lives, in our church, that need to be closed. There are doors that need to be opened. It's Jesus, the only one that has those doors, that the key to those doors. Amen? Amen. But, and this is why he's recording us this morning. He's just reminding us, my friends, I am the key. Did you remember? He's the one who has that key. So he's not opposed to what you are doing as a church. He's happy with what you are doing. He's come, he has come to tell you it's good. You are following the Holy One. He has the keys. But my friend, just know that no human power can stop what Jesus has initiated in your lives. Amen? Amen? No human power can stop what Jesus has decided to open in your lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. No human power can uh, close what Jesus has opened in your life. Amen. And I want you to, to also understand one thing, that sometimes Jesus himself lets doors closed. Amen. And then we think it's come from the devil. No, my friends. When we read 1 Corinthians 16, can someone read it very quickly? 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9. Uh, verse 9. A great door for an effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. Amen? Amen. Apostle Paul is talking about the great door that was opened, but before that, the Lord himself closed that door. Sometimes the Lord can let, leave a door closed because he knows the danger that are awaiting you. He knows what is there behind that door. He knows where he doesn't want you to go. There, for now. Then you think, is my family, is my friend, is the sorcerer, is this or that? The Lord knows better than you. He knows your tomorrow. Amen. Why is he leaving that door closed? Maybe because he's preparing the way for you. Amen. And he also wants you, and as he's preparing the way for you, my friend, he will also show you those things you didn't see. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God dangers that if that door he has let it open for you, you will have jumped into it and start fighting fights that you did not expect. And then you say, now, Lord, Lord, why? Why have you left me? I did not leave you. I just let the door closed. But you forced it. That's why we need to understand. Sometimes he himself leaves the door closed. If the Lord is still leaving the door closed, my friend, don't force to open it. Do you hear that? When the door is still closed, don't stop looking for reasons here and there. Ask, Lord, why are you allowing this door to remain closed? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he will tell you why. Then he will show you why. Then from there, when it is time, he himself is going to open it. Hallelujah. 
Amen. 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 Now the Lord says, He's the one who opens the door. And I want to tell you this morning that a church like Philadelphia is a, the kind of church that we have. Because the Lord is opening doors to the ministry and to service. And when, when, whatever door that he has opened to, for you to serve him, I am telling you that no one can stop it. And whoever wants to stop it, the Lord will remove them from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If someone is trying to stop you from doing the work of God, and that God has already set the work for you, is that person that the Lord is going to remove. Amen. He's going to separate you. Hallelujah. God doesn't divide. He said we divide, but God separates. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we have to be very careful. When you know the Lord is calling you to do something, if you don't have time to do it normally, just take your time. Pray so that He prepares you. But don't let people influence you or stop you from doing the work of God. If you let that, God Himself is going to separate. Because if you cannot serve here, He will send you where you can serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how the Lord works. It is His plan that has to prevail, not man's plan. But now, we also stop ourselves from serving the Lord. We also shut the doors that He has opened. And we have to be very careful about that. When the Lord is calling you and you're stopping yourself, it's the same as well. He will put you aside. Be very careful about that, my friends. Because God doesn't like emptiness. When there was emptiness, he sent the Holy Spirit around the, the earth. God doesn't like an empty seat, my friend. If he's calling you, you say no. Trust me, he will put some money to sit in your, in your, on your place. Amen? Amen. We need to be very careful. It applies. He's the one who opens doors to ministry, to service. And he gives you the gift that goes with what he's calling you to do. So, let's move on. You know what I'm, I think is that the Lord says, I know what you're doing to the church of Philadelphia. But actually, what he's trying to say here is that it's not just I know what, what you're doing. It's actually because of what you are doing. Because of what you're doing. He's giving the church the reasons. Because you have a little power. You have a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Those are the three things he said. You have little power. He says, I know you have little power, my friend. He's not saying, I know. It's actually because you have little power, my friend. It means that because I know that I, I know that you have little power. I know it. Don't worry about that. I know that. And you have kept my word. And you have not denied my name. When I look at that, my friends, I see Roman Resource Center. I see Roman Resource Center. That power the Lord is talking about is not the power like people make people to fall in churches. It's the power in, I, I'll tell you something. Today, we have little power financially, but look at what we can do. We are small in numbers, but my friends, we are not complaining. Some churches are big in numbers, but they are complaining. Just about the functioning of the church. Amen? That's the power the Lord is talking about. It's not the power to make people fall or see miracles that are sometimes not even coming from Christ himself. Hallelujah. Amen. This should teach us something very important. It is not, when, when God Jesus opens the door, the church, and it's because the church is fulfilling certain conditions. My friends, Jesus cannot work where there is disorder. Because first is the God of order. And there are conditions that will allow him to start opening the doors that he has already set for us. Hallelujah. Amen. When we have not fulfilled those conditions, he cannot act. He cannot. And the first among those conditions is that we have to discover the power that we have through the Holy Spirit. My friend, do you know the power that you have through the Holy Spirit? Do you know? Do you know the power that you have? That's the problem. And you, you if the, the Lord has given you, you know the Spirit lives in you. That Spirit has power. The Spirit wants to express Himself. But you are not letting Him, because you are not letting Him, my friend, I need to say. It is you and you alone. The Spirit is, uh, is available to be used. So if you don't know the power that the Spirit 
of the Holy Spirit that is in you. It's you and you alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to know, discover the power of the Spirit individually. Because that spiritual power that the Lord is talking about was given to us. And this is what is giving you the strength to do the work of God. The strength to continue walking with the Lord. So it's important for us to know. I'm not talking about the power that we get to our faith. The faith to believe that God can do something when we expect God to do something. I'm not talking about that one. We have power to our faith. Because we, we have the faith that God can change things. No, my friend, I'm talking about that power that is already in you and that you are not using. Amen? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit cannot come in you with, with nothing. It's impossible. He gives powers. He gives spiritual gifts. If you are not using it, He's waiting for you to, to do something about what He's giving you. You're not just going to come and say, you know God doesn't force anyone. And who knows that? Who knows that? Amen? Amen? God doesn't force us. He didn't force anyone to do anything. He will never stop. He is not going to stop now. So, we need to know what we need to discover first. I'm sorry if I, I find this off, so <laughs> I'm just trying to put things back on here. So, the church of God is a church that lives in, with the spirit of God. And it's the same, a Christian is someone who lives with the Spirit of God. Living with the Spirit of God means that you have the Spirit acting through you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we often think that we have the Spirit only because we can pray and have a relationship with God. The Spirit of God is not there to sleep in you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Spirit of God is there to do what he came to do, to be used through you. Amen. To save souls through evangelism, to do other works that the Lord can give anyone to do. Amen? Amen. And that spirit is in us. We need to discover what the Lord wants us to do with the spirit he has put in us. Amen? So this is what all church members have to look for. Amen? Amen. Now, I also want to remind us, all of us today, that Ephesians 2, verse 10 tells us that we are the workmanship of God. We are the masterpiece of God, my friends, in Christ Jesus. Do you really know what it means? We were created for one thing, to do good works. Do you do good works for the Lord? Or you do a little and everything you've done it all. You know, I have uh, this uncle who used to, he would sit there, he would be like, oh, the only one person I like to iron my shirt is Regine. You know why? Because he knew. We were, how many children? About four. Yeah, about four teenagers there in the house. He used to say he liked me to iron his shirt. You know why? And he will say it, he said that the only person I know who irons my shirt and I won't see any wrinkle on it is Regine. Everyone else knew how to iron the shirts. But I was the only one who did it well. And I will tell you, I really didn't like it because he was only calling me every time. But yet, it was only me who was sending to do it because he knew that if he said to Joseph, Joseph would do it, cha 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 cha. At least we'll do it and once he even burnt one. You know? So that then we'll do it in a way, blah, blah, blah. He knew. We are called to do good works for the Lord. But now, sometimes we do it as a routine. We have to be very careful, my friends. Jesus has no reproach. But he's just reminding us today of those good things that we are supposed to do. Amen? Amen. You have to be very careful because that is why you have been made a Christian. You have been made a Christian for to walk like Christ, to demonstrate love, to do, to help people, sorry, to show mercy, and those all those things, and to. Come
comfort people, to witness for Christ. And these are all the things that will make good works. Hallelujah. Amen. If you only come to church and sweep the floor, but when someone needs advice out there, you cannot talk to them about Christ, my friend, you are doing part of the good works. It just uh, like you have ironed the shirt, but you did it just because you wanted to do it very quickly. You have to be very careful. Jesus said, following him is not easy. It's not easy, my friends. But when you follow him, you have to do it fully. Don't stop on the way. Because we are, done, we are here to do good works. Amen? Amen? Ministry. The ministry that God gives can grow. But it grows all the, in the time of God. There will be challenges. But God encourages us. Jesus encourages us and he is also giving us the blessings as we go along. Some of the blessings, you cannot see them like this. And I will tell you why. Just like we were singing this morning, Lord, give me so much that I cannot contain. You know, if the Lord fills this church right now, while we are not ready, we will all run away. We will all run away. Amen? Amen. But because you are doing good things that he approves, you have not denied him. You are preaching his word the way he said you have to preach it. He approves it. That's what he says this morning. Yet, he's giving you uh, advice to go further so that he can do what he's planned for you. That's what this message to Philadelphia is about. Amen? Amen. And he knows, the Lord says to the church of Philadelphia, once again, you have little power. That is the fact that the, 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 they are not using Despite the numbers. You know some people expect the church to be big. I'm not talking about personally about anyone. I'm just saying there are people who cannot come to this church today who are already they will come later when they see the church big. Amen? Amen. I remember once we had a conference and this man came and I met him on the street again. He said that he came and then he didn't see the world. He saw there were not lots of people and then he left. He came. He came. Because he didn't see lots of the church field, he left. I met him back so a few days after the conference, outside, and then I said to myself, wow, man follow. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all I thought. Man follow. So were you coming to that church for Christ or were you coming for the men that were in the church? You have to be very careful. Jesus says he knows you have a little power. And it's true. We don't have financial means. We don't have a manpower. We don't have enough hands. So we have to do everything. But yet, the Lord approves of what we're doing. And that's the most important. Because he knows the potential that he has put in, all, in each of and every one of us. You know, and the most important thing is when I think that Today, I am doing the contents in the BET on the 31st of October for Rema Resort Center the other day. You cannot know how I praise the Lord as I'm doing that. Because all my studies, I finished doing an English in English. When I was doing a contency before baccalaureate, I was all the last person in the class. But by the time I got to university, I was the first to know contency in my class. And then I left that accountancy to do English, which was my passion. Look, when did I leave university, my friends? And today, that accountancy that I hated, that accountancy that I learned despite myself, is the one I'm using today to do accountancy for the church. The Lord doesn't give you a talent or a gift for no reason. He knows the future. Because if I couldn't do it today, we will have to pay someone to do it. Amen? Amen. He knows you have a little power. But that little power, he also knows what.
what that little power can do. Amen. So it's not about the numbers. You have some power, not much power, and he is going to increase the potential of the ministry when you are ready, when you have met the conditions of what he's asked you to do for now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You just like a baby. For baby, you just don't start giving them for food. So, my friends, maybe we are not on the milk, maybe we are already chewing a little bit, but we can still not swallow for food. Because we've been here a year. You might not see what has happened. You might not know how many people Reverend Research Center has touched around the world. If those people were, who were touched, maybe through a scripture on Facebook or a preaching that we post on our website, come here today. Let's say the, word, the Lord says, everyone who heard about Rema, and you heard something coming from them because it's about his word. It's not about Rema, it's about his word. Every word that they preached or a meditation that they wrote, that you read and touched you, they came here. That's the time you will know. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That is the time you will know what is happening. And I trust that the Lord knows and that we have his approbation. Not because people are clapping, oh, this word is good, this preaching is good. There's a man who sent a message the other day on the um, on the on the, the Facebook saying he went to see the gospel dance what we were doing. He said, Wow, this is perfect. He started writing messages. Do you know what that word is going to do to him? We don't know. He just says what it did, but do we are we behind to know and see what is happening? We are not there. It's the seed that we planted and the spirit does the rest. But we don't know. Imagine the Lord says throughout the world. Everyone was touched. The seed, they come here. My friend, I will tell you something. I believe we won't have enough space to see those people. Because there are those who tell us and those who don't say anything. Amen? Amen. Those who don't say anything, we won't have enough space. That's also the reason why I want to tell the church that. The Lord is just preparing this church. And when He finishes preparing us, and we are ready. There will be so much to do that it's important to be ready to eat food. If you cannot swallow food and digest it, my friend, don't run. Amen? Amen. And that's what Jesus is telling to Philadelphia. I know you have the power, but the power of the Spirit is given to you, it's given to your church. My word, that's all he says. Because he says, you get my word. We must continue preaching the word of God. We must continue meditating it. We must continue teaching it. We must continue talking about it. We must continue studying it. That's all Jesus is asking for us today. As a group and individually. Because as you do that, he has promised us many things. The implications to remaining in what the Lord has given us is important. Because he says three things. When our lives, our private lives, when the ministry, when what we are doing, the activities in the church and everything are Christ-based, Jesus cannot let you down. He cannot let you down. It's when you think, oh my God, you start even looking at the window, oh, how am I going to do this? The solution will come from nowhere. Amen? Amen. Because that's how Christ is. It's because you, it means that you are following the truth. This is also if you want to measure. If you are following the truth, my friends, that's how you can measure it. Because Christ doesn't lie. And his word is true. It's not about magic, like you do when you want this and it comes. No, my friend, it's because you are doing what he says you need to do. Then he fulfills his promises. If you don't, he cannot. And he's, he not that he cannot because he doesn't want to. It's you yourself who are stopping him from doing it. It's just like he's 
minister to your God, like he said, I, I, I'm knocking, open, so that I can give you what I want to give you. So we just need to keep focusing on the Lord, focusing on keeping his word, because he is word. He is the word, and he is the truth. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said to the church of Philadelphia, he is the Lord who has the keys of David's house. What does it mean to you as a Christian? <clears throat> it means that he knows there are doors in your lives that need to be opened up and closed. The only way for you to have them opened and closed is Christ, the Lord. There's no other way. You start looking on the left, or on the right, you have, you're going to lose focus. You start crying with people, you're going to lose focus. Amen? Amen? Do you remember that person who said, Lord, let me go and bury my father first? He said, come with me first. Leave the dead, bury the dead. If someone is crying next to you, I'm not saying you cannot pray for the person. Leave that person, but don't lose your focus on Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Don't lose your focus on Christ. I will, tell, I will tell you something. Some people, just like sometimes, uh, it's too bad that my brother was there, he's not here. He's so much focused, he wants his mom to, to, be, to be converted so much that he always loses his focus on Christ. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. He's losing his focus on Christ because he wants, he absolutely wants. Now it's no longer you who want. It's Christ in you. Who is the spirit in you that has to be the that has to direct your will? The will of God for you is what, my friend? For you to need a strong relationship with Him first. Now, if you lose that focus, start focusing on your job, on your marriage, on your children, and everything else, you lose the focus of Christ. My friends, we're not gonna live in a house of shit, I'm telling you. I'm not gonna lose my focus on Christ. If you don't want to clean, Christian, I don't mind. You're going to sleep in a house of shit. Sorry to use that word, but I'm not going to lose my focus on Christ. Amen. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's deep what I'm trying to say, but it applies to each and every one because I know the covenant I have made with my Lord. I'm not going to shout because you didn't do this or you didn't do that. If I start doing that, I will lose my focus on Christ. That's why I keep doing what I need to do until you guys understand that mom is no longer the mom she used to be. Focus on Christ. Amen, amen. I'm not going to do those things that are going to take me away from Christ. Amen. 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 Because of what I have with my Lord. Because if I need to be doing things. I will stand up and then, you know what a faith for us is taking me one hour, something one hour and 30 minutes to do. And then I have to stop this because I have to go and do someone's bed. No kidding me. Or start shouting or being behind you, do your bed, do your bed. My friend, just sleep like that. What's my problem? Amen? Amen. Because as you were small, I taught you how to. When I did, I had time for that. I, I was teaching you how to. But now, that's how you move from one level to another. If it's the baby that you need to feed again with something, you feed them. When they are no longer a baby, you don't spend time doing that again. Amen? Amen. It's just to draw attention to a few things. That's how the Lord works with us as well. He knows where he has already taken you. But sometimes it's you yourself who doesn't want to grow up. Or you are sufficient enough. You think where I am, I'm fine. But yet the Lord wants to take you to another level. Do you let him take you there? Amen. How do you let him? How do you know you are letting him? It's not because you read the Bible every day. Go back and see the good works. Before you used to do this, maybe you were doing it and you stopped. Are you still doing it, my friend? Has the Lord asked you to stop?
has the Lord said, now stop. And how do you know it's the Lord who said, stop? I'll give you an example when I wanted to leave that church we used to go. I said for March, I used to tell people, I'm no longer with you, but I was waiting for the Lord himself to let me go. Didn't I say that? If it was me alone, I would have left long ago. He took months and I kept praying, praying, praying. The Lord doesn't ask. I will tell you something. When you are doing the work of the God, God cannot tell you to stop. It's Satan. The only time the Lord will remove you from his work, if it's what you are doing, you are serving out of nowhere, stop just like that. Because he cannot remove you not to put you back somewhere. He cannot take you where you are doing. Like I'm standing here and I'm preaching. If he says, Reggie, you stop preaching in our say, he will give me something else to do. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. For his kingdom, he cannot say, now stop and go and sleep at home. No. He will never do that. Amen. It's impossible. He's not coming from God. Someone tells you, I'm stopping the work of God. I'm stopping this. He's not coming from God. You will be able to be very careful. Because Jesus cannot appoint you to remove you without the appointing you. He will give you promotion, my friend. Amen, amen, amen. He will give you promotion. That's why when you can hear the word of the, 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 the Lord talking, be very careful. Lord, is it really you talking to me? Jesus says this church is a small church, but he claims to them, I am the Holy One. I am the Lord. This means that I'm the one who gives spiritual gifts. I'm the one who gives the finances to the church. I'm the one who is the source of the church. That's what we have to understand this morning as Christians and as a church. When he says, I'm the only one, it means everything is in me. Don't stop. He didn't say much. That's a revelation of it. So it means also, when you go and look at why this that is not mine, you come to apply it in my church, it's not going to work. So if you know he's the only one, he's the source of everything, so you're waiting. He's going to provide it on the right time. Amen? Amen. Amen. But sometimes we are so in the heart we start worrying. We start worrying. The same. He's the one who gives the spiritual competence. As for me, when you are going to come to the you will be preaching. I remember when Noah had a, a, a dream about me long ago preaching. I said, no, no, I think you saw me doing a conference. It wasn't preaching. I couldn't believe. I, Regine, couldn't believe. But the God knew he has already put the spiritual competence in me. Amen. You know why I couldn't believe? Little power. I have, I know, he said, I know you have little power. Yes, yet that little power can grow thanks to the spirit I have put in you. That little power I have given to your church can grow thanks to the spirit that I have put in your church. That little power I know you have can grow thanks to what you have in you, which comes from me, Jesus, not from a man. What the Lord is saying. You have spiritual competence, but it's going to grow only through me. When you remain in me. Hallelujah! Amen. When you keep my word. Amen. That's what the Lord is telling the church. You see, this church may be small today, but for Jesus it is not. That's all I want you to understand. It is not. It is not. Yes, we have little finance, but we have little complaint about paying the rent. We have little manpower. I remember when we used to go, how many people were there? But yet, even people who didn't wake up to go to the church. On time, I mean, on time to come and put the equipment. Even, sometimes we can even short, but we still manage to start the service so that we can finish on time. Because we have, we have not had a huge incident of time. Let me put it that way. Amen? We, 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 we have a little uh, instrument. But 
The Lord is using what He has put in everyone to be able to do things. Jews who didn't go to piano lessons can now play. Today he's playing with one hand. Little resource. One day I'm telling you, you'll see him playing with two hands. Without going to school. Amen. 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 That is spiritual competence of the Holy Spirit. We didn't have any preacher when we started. The Lord has provided preachers here. Amen. When who is preaching? I remember the first preaching. I said, you're going to preach next Sunday. He said, oh, no, no, I'm not ready. I said, you're preaching. Amen? Amen? That's how it is. Spiritual competence that was hiding in you, my friend. The Lord brings it out. Because that day, when I said, you're going to preach, you, the belief was there. You believed. Maybe I can preach. I believe I can preach. Let me try. That's how spiritual gift can be activated. Amen? Amen. This is exactly how you activate your spiritual gift. If I had listened to him, no, mom, I can remember it was in January. You said, no, you are not ready. That was the word you gave me. I said, no, no, my friend, you're going to go. Had I listened to you, that's what the Lord says. Let the dead bury the dead. Had I listened to you, you see, that's spiritual. You know, sometimes when you take time, you even become afraid of doing things. Have you noticed that? When you want to do something immediately, if you don't do it, you can start thinking, oh, can I really do it? The doubt starts in you. Sometimes it's like that. You can you can start hesitating. But now you wait, the Lord empowered you, and it becomes normal. Before, if you go behind, you think, oh, how did I even start? You I think your answer will be I really, I really, really don't know. Spiritual competence from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And this is exactly how you activate your spiritual gift. Now, the word of God. And Jesus said, we have to keep the word. He said, actually, he said to the church, you get the word. This is the faithfulness to the word, which is very important to each and every one as an individual. As an individual. Because the word that you keep, it means that you have to watch over it. You watch over something that can run away from you. Let me, let me be clear on that. You watch over, when they say watch over a child, it means that the child is next to you, you are watching over him. Yeah? If you turn a bit, you don't know the child can run away in the place you don't know where it is gone. That's how you have to watch over the word of God. My friends, do you understand that? You have to guard it, keep it, preserve it. It's not only about reading it, it's about meditating it. So that it doesn't run away from you. Attending Bible studies, so you get more knowledge. Exhort each other. I will tell you one thing, there's nothing more than dangerous than reading or meditating the alone, alone. I want to say, say this once again. There is nothing more than dangerous than reading and meditating the word of God alone. First, look at the word of God. Do you think that the God himself could not have inspired one person to write the whole Bible? He could. But the Lord is wise. The wisdom comes from him. He had many people in different areas to write things in the Bible. And when you see people who wrote like Isaiah and then Paul or Jesus talking to those things that Isaiah talked about and everything, they come together and it's still one. Amen. That's why the Lord uses different, different people to give you revelations, to teach you, to help you meditate. If you become self-sufficient thinking that you can learn from the word of God, of God alone, be very careful. The word of God is something to be shared. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is something to be shared. You need to be very careful on that. It is to be shared. That's the reason why you see, I'm sorry I'm not talking about Catholics just because I want to criticize. You see the Catholic Church, they are sharing the word. I was a Catechist. The priest will come, tell us, you're going to teach um, the children about this. I was not there. I wasn't 
sense to go and read the word. He will tell us what to say. Now, what he told, what he will tell me, you see, he learned it for himself. Maybe he learned that revelation, that, 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 that revelation for himself, and he's just coming to tell me, and then I'm going to repeat it to the children. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Why? I think it's more benefiting when we have a Bible study where we all sit together. When I was a catechist, we didn't have that. That we would have a Bible study with the priest there and all the catechists together and we were sharing the word. No. We didn't have that. And then from what we will learn all together, I can now go because I know that I ask questions to those things that I didn't know. Which means that when I will go, that's what I'm saying, that knowing Learning from the word of God alone is dangerous. Because today I recognize before the Lord that I used to teach people, young children, about things I did not understand myself. Isn't it sad to say that? I did not understand what I was teaching people. Because sometimes I will read a scripture, because the, 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 the priest will give us a scripture to preach, to, sorry, to, 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 start, to, to, to help the children with. But I have no background, anyone who gave me anything. So I will read it, read it and then I will give them what I understood. With the little knowledge I knew, which was so little because at that time I didn't even understand the Bible. Amen? Amen. And I will tell you one thing. When I was the kind of person that, oh, they gave me that passage, I will read only that passage and give it. I don't mind. I didn't know that maybe sometimes to understand the whole, you need to all have read from the first to the end of it. I get what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm coming back to say that it can be very dangerous. But Jesus said we have to keep the word. We have to be committed to Christ's word. Committed. Keep the word because that word is the word that saves. The word that gives us freedom. And if you don't preserve yourself from false ideas and contaminations, it can be dangerous. Amen? And the one thing that God, sorry, Christ promised us in this passage is our spiritual uh, fidelity, our spiritual faithfulness that will keep us separate from the world. Amen? Amen. So the Lord Jesus makes the promise to us. Can someone read verse 9, please? Amen? 
So do you want to be that church where he, has, he dresses a big list like he condemned the others? I have this ability, you, you are spiritually dead. You have become uh, um, cold, uh, how do you call it? Lukewarm. Do you want to be those? Or do you want to be the one where he says, I am the Holy One. I am the Lord. I am Jesus. And I see what you're doing. I have nothing to say against what you're doing. Yet, because I want you to move on, let me give you some advice. Okay. What is better, my friend? We need to know that he has a wonderful promise for us. And that promise is he's coming back. And he is coming back, and he's also going to change our names. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. He's changing your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is changing your name. Amen. Huh. You know, can we read Revelation 3, verse 11 to 13, please? I'm going to read it, read it very quickly. I don't know. 
of you, the church is with me on this one. That's the reason why, can you read uh, Corinthians, very, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12 and 15 very quickly, and it's going to be the last one we're going to read today. Apostle Paul teaches us that about the foundation laid in human hearts. Can someone read it very quickly? If any man builds on its foundation, foundation using gold, silver, quantity, stone, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each one's work. If what he has built survive, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one is given through the flames. Amen. Do you hear that? It is a crown of great opportunity for service that we might not lose, my friends. Be very careful about that. That crown might be lost. Do not let anyone, anybody, take away from you what Jesus has planted in you through his spirit. Amen? Amen. Do not let anything, do not lose the opportunities that you have. Possess them so that you can have the reward that come along with them. Because the promises that Jesus has made to the overcomers is that the first one is that I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and never again will he leave it. All believers are in the spiritual household of God. That's what Ephesians 22, sorry, Ephesians 2 verse 22 says. All believers, I can read it very uh, uh, quickly. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. But it's only some people who are going to have the special reward. It's not always about losing salvation, my friends. You can still be saved. But God, Jesus, has a reward. Our Lord is promising to those who hold on fast who keep his word, a position in the life to come, a special position, a special reward, a crown, and we should make sure that we're going to have that. Amen? Amen. You have to be very careful about that. It's not about losing your salvation. Only it's about what comes. Are you going to continue serving the Lord? Amen? And then he also says, the second promise he gives us is that he's going to give us names. He's going to redeem us. I will soon finish. The first name is giving us three names. He will name. This is a promise that believers will be made God-like because he's going to give you a name. The name that comes from God. Because you kept to the end, my friend. Because you had that, that, that faithfulness that kept to the end. He will give you that name that is, makes you godlike. Hallelujah. The second thing is that he's going to give you, he will write, I will write the name of the city of my God. He's going to write your name down. What is the city of the God, of his God? The New Jerusalem. Your name is going to wait for you in the New Jerusalem. Amen. Do the good works today. Your name is going to wait for you in the city of the New Jerusalem for you to celebrate. Amen? Amen. And the last thing is that I will also write on him my new name. That new name of Jesus, no one knows it for now. You know, Christ Jesus was given the name because the angel came to Mary and said, When this child is born, give him the name Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Yeah? But the new name he will come with, no one knows it, but you're going to have it. Hey, hallelujah. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying here. You're going to have it. Because he will save his people. He will go along with his people, those who kept to the end. Throughout tribulation and everything, you kept and everything. So now, it's not about the Jesus who came to redeem us, to, sorry, to redeem us from sin, who is coming back. 
it is another Jesus who is going to come back with a new name. And the Bible says, to, for now, no one knows that name. I don't want to know the name, I just want to be with the one who has a new name. Amen. Amen. That's all. So I want to finish saying that. Who, who, he who has ears, may them hear what the Spirit of God says to the churches. Amen. Today, once again. It's important for us to stop sometimes and ask ourselves, do we really keep the word of God in the midst of challenges? When challenges come, trials and things very hard to live come, do we really keep it? Do we still have the zeal to proclaim and share the gospel despite everything? How do we do it? Do you do it with your family members despite their opposition? Do you do it with your friends? Or when your friends said, no, come tomorrow, you just stop. Or do you insist? Or do you continue? Because the Lord looks at all that. You know, having a crown is not an easy thing. It's not just something that comes like that. It will be so easy. The Lord said, we're going to be saved, but some will be the pillars. Some will receive the crown. My friend, what are you looking for? You want to bear Jesus' new name with you? What are you doing? The last point is that Christ is coming soon. Christ is coming soon. How many faithful will he find remaining in the church of, of in his church? How many are you going to be counted about those who remained faithful to him? The only way is by holding on, holding fast, keeping his word, and always remember the promise of God. Because Christ will come back in his majesty. He has already given us victory. And we are going to share his glory. His glory. Amen? Amen. Because he has already given us that victory. Amen. And that glory is available to us as we remain faithful to him. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us give a clap to the Lord for this word. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give a hand of applause. Wow. What a message. Um, I just want us to bow our heads and just pray for this message, please. Holy Father, we we want to say thank you for this message, Lord. Thank you for this word of encouragement, Father. Thank you for this word of wisdom and this word of knowledge. Lord, we pray that we may not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. Our Father, if our faith has pleased you and our works has pleased you, Lord, then let us continue to please you and you alone. Lord, you know our hearts, you know each and every single one of us, Lord. So Father, work in our hearts, Lord. Let us see not grow on rocky grounds or stony grounds, but let it grow on good, on good ground, Lord. For your glory and your glory alone. You know. Father, let us run a good race. For as we know that in every race there is a price. Let us run this good race. And by your grace and for your glory, we shall be crowned, Lord. Okay. For you and you alone. You know. Father, let us remain faithful. With the little power that we have, Father, let us remain faithful to you. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, we exalt you, we praise you, we adore you. 